everyone, and welcome to this very special edition of Heartbeat Alaska. Thank you so very much for joining us. Last week, we had part one, and that part one demonstrated, rather than spoke of wellness, it demonstrated wellness through speeches and also through wonderful dancing. And this week, we take a look at the Youth and Elders Conference once again. Wellness is a journey that is taking place now in the hearts and the souls, the minds of Alaska Native people. It's a journey that began long ago. What is wellness? Well, depending on who you talk to, wellness can mean many things. Wellness to me means that you motivate yourself to get up in the morning, to do something good, to say hi, to hug an elder, to, to feed somebody that's hungry. Wellness means um, the ability to know yourself. Everybody needs to realize that wellness is not just for people who come to AFM, but is vital to our existence and our future. We're trying to get wellness in our lives that's important to our communities. It's, uh, it's not only in the community, it's all, all over the state. The elders opening up more and really getting involved. I believe speaking up and standing up, expressing yourself is a good part of wellness. The whole meaning of that has to be interpreted and translated together with the elders and uh, the youth. No matter what the meaning may be for you, it was the reason for this year's AFN Youth and Elders Conference, a conference that focused on the strengths. I'm going to treat all the other people around me well, even if they don't treat me well, even if I see suffering. I'm not going to live that way. A conference that focused on hope. We will all work together as brothers and sisters, parents and elders, to protect our children. That's our hope. A conference that focused on the beauty of our Alaska Native people. We are a beautiful people for everything that we have been through, for all the trauma, the grief, and sometimes we feel that shame and that hopelessness and that helplessness. And we need to learn to be proud of who we are. And, and Alaska Native people are a beautiful people, very beautiful. An Alaska Native reawakening. That means reawakening. We can sleep it. Together we can and together we will bring about wellness for Alaska Native people. No matter where you live in the world, people have something in common, and that is the vast differences between youth and elders. Bridging this gap makes a way for healing. For the elders, it's a healing process that begins with tradition and knowing the old ways, a link to the past. For the youth, it's a process that requires a knowledge of their past and an understanding of a westernized world and how they fit into both worlds. You know, I think we're at a crossroads, uh, mostly for our young people here. They are, um, <clears throat> they are at a point where um, you know, decisions have to be made. And um, a, lot of, a lot of the decisions that they have to be, have to be made 
uh, will probably have to rely on the wisdom of the elders, what they have learned from the elders, and in combination what they have learned from um, from the Western society as well. So we need good, educated, well-rounded people um, to make decisions, um, very hard decisions for, for the Native people. The AFN 2002 Youth and Elders Conference brought hundreds of Native people together all across the state of Alaska and from around the world meeting to have their voices heard. Workshops and talking circles were a strong point at this gathering, allowing discussions to take place between the different generations and a better understanding to be reached. This workshop focused on stories and their importance within our native cultures. We are stories. Uh, we are stories. Not just we're told stories, we are stories. I mean, the stories that are being told now are a lot of, lot of, lot of hurtful stories, a lot of family problems, fetal alcohol syndrome, alcohol, you know, addiction, and those are those are stories. Those are the stories. Those are examples that a lot, a lot of kids have going on. I want to start telling a story of healing. You know, I want to start telling a story of creation, not reaction to addiction not reaction to boredom, but just straight creation. I want to start telling this story of healing, of responding to all the things that hurt us, and there are a ton of things that hurt us, of responding to those things in a way that almost absorbs, you know, absorbs all it can take, and then allows that part to heal. What's our story? This workshop not only allowed people to think outside the box, but also started the youth working on the resolutions towards a better story, and above all, to have their story heard. Hi, I'm Lisa Zam with Alaska Family Hospice, your home in the city. We would like to invite you to stay with Alaska Family, located right next to the Alaska Native Medical Center. We will have a new addition for our special prenatal guests, a beautiful prenatal home. Call to make your reservations. This fall and winter, every guest is entered in a very special drawing every week for gift certificates, and in December, a grand drawing. So the next time you're coming to Anchorage, stay with Alaska Family, your home in the city. Breaking through the cloud, she Gather your strength. Gather your strength. Gather together. Gather up families. Elders. Kids. Villages. It is time to come forward to plant new hope. To see the beauty within our people. To reawaken the spirit. It is a movement. It starts inside you and grows into healthy native villages. Join, Join the, the reawakening. Reawaken. Visit nativefederation.org and let the conversation begin. Why is this happening? Me? What do they want from me? It's not fair. I need answers. Now I got a place to go. TeamCentral.net. Team then I feel trapped. I'm, I'm angry. angry. I don't know the way out. Depressed. And I don't get why. Things are so messed up. TeamCentral.net helps. I can feel better. It's a website. It's a website, it's a website it's a web created like by teams. Like created by teams. Teams like me. TeamCentral.net. Team the story. Like mine. Log on. Work it out. I wasn't going to school because I was making money stealing cars. Well, I was 10 when I first got involved with drugs. I skipped school because, you know, nobody cared. When I first got pregnant, school was not important to me, so I dropped out. Well, if I don't finish school, then I can't go to college. I mean, that's the whole point of what I want to do with my life. I still need to go to school and make, make it for myself. I think I'm happier now. I know I'm happier now. hear it. I do. It's a sound of reawakening, a sound heard in the hearts and the minds of our native people today. 
from the older people to the younger people, a reawakening of wellness. The nation is a distinct group of people with a, with a similar culture, a language, a land base, and a history together. Our people are nations, the Yupik nation, the Nupak nation, Dene or Akabasa nation, Tlingit nation, Haya nation, Alali nation, Lutik nation. One young man who spoke to the people of Alaska was Chief Yvonne Peter of Arctic Village, who not only touched the hearts of the elders at this conference, but also reached the youth through more contemporary means. Started controversy in 95, on my start to my dreams are hard, believed in what I had seen, knew I would learn to lean on my brother, on my sister, on either side, see ancestor and elder as my guide, find balance in troubled times through historical lessons, find the blessings our people need, overcome the mainstream greed and oppression, magnify my soul and spirit, teach love and respect, break it down in a dialect, unique, that's like what you heard me speak? Truth comes to those that listen. We have stories to tell, the elders reminiscing, ages old wisdom and tradition. It's time to bring trail up the current tradition. On whose land do we stand? And through whose eyes is it determined? Determining our own destiny is what we seek. But we must see clearly, discard the idea that we are weak. You see, we have connections to places unseen. The eagle and raven coming through the wind clean. And the wind whispers in my ear, the generation of our redemption is here. You see, we have cycles that need be broken. From the mountains to the flats, I hear the words of the elders have been spoken and the youth have made themselves clear. We have no fear. It's our language that we want to hear. A uh, cultural revolution is about to break. Make no mistake, last many years are going to take their place. Transcending the stars in space, with hope and beauty, we'll fulfill our duty to future generations and stand tall as indigenous nations. I'll see you. It was also an opportunity for the youth of Bethel, Alaska to instruct their staff. The 2002 National Drill Team Champions, the Bethel JROTC, were shining examples of teamwork and dedication. The kind of dedication it will take to make wellness amongst our people a way of life. If we think of tribal wellness and getting ourselves into a positive focus, is it, it's a profound effect on the young people. I've already noticed that here, you know, being able to speak towards that and finding ways to move in that direction. There's a lot of passion in these young people, but they don't really get to speak to that passion, you know, and this is that opportunity. Speaking your truth, you know, finding ways to speak your passion. It doesn't mean, you know, being confrontational or being aggressive. It means speaking from your heart. And I don't think any culture objects to that. The goal of this presentation is to commemorate and honor those that have passed on. From the past, we look to a hopeful future. Alaska Native children in state custody is represented by the Royal Blue Balloons. The Alaska Native Commission's report found that at least one in 11 Alaska Native children was in, in need of and receiving child protective services.
We comprise approximately 17% of the overall native population and well over 50% of the kids that are in DFYS custody are Alaska Natives. So my granddaughter and I, that's one of, one of our things is sobriety. That's something that we both firmly believe in, sobriety. The suicide rate for Alaska Natives is approximately 12 per year. The statistic was found from the Alaska Bureau of Vital Statistics. The red balloons are to commemorate those that have passed on. During this presentation, youth had the opportunity to express their concerns about some of the things that have hurt them. Juvenile incarceration rate will be represented by the green balloons. In 2000, according to the Department of Corrections, there were 1,577 Alaska Native juvenile inmates. By honoring different groups of people who have come before them, they allowed the healing process to begin. I believe speaking up and standing up, expressing yourself is a good part of wellness. When you speak about things that are close to you, dear to you, uh, when you stand up for your own people, when you express your voice, when you get, the, it's like getting a sickness out of your body because it gets stuck in our bodies. When it gets stuck in our bodies, and we haven't expressed it, we get sick. And I think we get, our tribes get sick, our people get sick. I believe that if we are able to express our voice, that's part of the healing, part of our healing. You know, we sing for millions of girls, but helping out in schools, that's the real deal, baby. I know our love can multiply. I'm the cute one, you know what I'm saying? Have you ever been backstage before? Cause you're the exit. I think you'll find that gravity is key in what I do. Once was one, but now we're two. I'm spinning out of control. <laughs> <laughs> To a child, a little of your time can make a lifetime of difference. That's why the Greenville Family Partnership sponsored a hike. Because kids with something to do are less likely to do drugs. Standing right in front of them. <laughs> Whether you're a good storyteller or a good listener, you can help. To find out about community drug prevention programs, call toll-free 1-877-KIDS-313. I can keep a kid off drugs. Jeannie Green Productions, Alaska's premier commercial, documentary, and event production team. Whenever and wherever you need video production, our experienced, dedicated professionals give your project the extra edge you're looking for. Alaska Native owned and operated. Jeannie Green Productions, your complete video production service. This year's AFN Conference on Wellness gave a platform to the elders, a voice to the elders, a place where they could speak and share their hearts, the hearts that are very, very valuable. The treasure of our culture are the elders and also our future, the youth, the voice of the youth leading us into our future. They say we're the sleeping giants. They say Indian people are the sleeping giants. You know, we went through a lot of things, a lot of hard times, a lot of, a lot of terrible things that you don't learn about in history. You know, they don't teach you. They don't teach you in the school. They don't tell you about it. You know, we learn about it from through our culture and through our elders. You know what happens to Indian people. That we're still here. We're still alive. Speaker and actor Brian Freho came to Alaska from the Lower 48 to be part of this reawakening. Don't drink. Don't do drugs. Don't party. You guys have to make that decision. 
You don't want somebody to stand up here and tell you, don't do this, don't do that. I never liked it. I never liked people telling me what to do. So I don't do that. You're going to make your own choices and your own decisions. There's a lot of power when you're making the right choices and you find that strength in your culture. And it's that strength that the youth of rural Alaska must draw from, the strength and knowledge of their ancestors, the very same strength that their ancestors drew from to heal themselves centuries ago. There's a treasure inside of what each elder that we need to know about. The ideas that I get from elders, we are stories, we are our ancestors. Those kind of stories and those concepts, those ideas, blow away pretty much everything else, every other message I get from any kind of society or education. It just blows it away, over, overpowers it. Because elders just know how to live, you know? Youth working with elders and elders working with youth, working together, uh, will be stronger than trying to do things on our own. The youth are being although they haven't, they had to live in two worlds for so long. And, and, and now I see, in a way, those two worlds merging into one. They're, they're, they're seeing a bigger picture in life and seeing that their, their traditional values are not just practiced in the community or the village, but they can take that to college with them. They can take that knowledge to whatever profession that they want to pursue, and that's what makes them unique, and that's what makes them, you know, clink it. That's what makes them Athabascan. That's what makes them them, and that's what makes them strong. Through listening, learning, and experiencing, we are on our way to a better future, a future of strength, hope, and beauty, a future of wellness. What it takes is the desire desire to change, desire to make a difference, desire just to keep the unity as a community. There's hope. If we continue ourselves to teach more culture and language in the villages, it'll change. We're going to help young people as, as long as there's a willingness of a elders that are in the village, we can help. They know the way and they, they're our guide to, to the future. Awakening. Awakening. Thank you everyone for joining us and thank you AFN and Alaska Family Hospice for sponsoring this program. We are so happy to be invited into your home and thank you so much for your phone calls and your emails, your letters. I love hearing from you. Join us again next week for more fabulous programming right here on this station. God bless every one of you and we'll see you then. What I learned is that we can go too much in the future and then have to go back and relearn what our ancestors have taught us. What kind of story do you want to tell? Do you want to tell a story of health, of um, a good, joyful story, a strong story, respectful story? Or do you want to tell a story of tragedy, of loss, of hurt, of death, victimization, you know, alcoholism, any of those things? My hope is that they'll have heard the messages that the speakers and the presenters are carrying you know, here for them and that they really begin to think about what's going on in their life personally, how they're feeling, what's happened to them in the past and begin that process of healing, inner healing and also of building up that strength and a way and seeing a path or a way in which that they can live their life to improve it for themselves and therefore improve that for their family and community as well. This is my second time coming to AFN. I came seven years ago, and there's approximately about 35 to 40 youth in the room. So it has, tr it has grown tremendously, and, and also we didn't have elders at that time. So it's nice to see that the elders and the youth aren't separated. And um, it's really encouraging because it's not also happening at the same time as the, the general session for the rest of the AFN delegates. So tribal leaders also have an opportunity to come. Well, I like it when the youth gets a chance to speak out and let other people hear them, what they have to say. I'm sort of optimistic about the future, so I sort of think that we'll have a lot more youth coming out and, 
helping other youth after they've sort of gone and grown up a little bit and then they can look back and, and know how to help each other better. And I see elders opening up more and really getting involved um, to a larger extent.